Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks, and here I'm going to do an unboxing of the LG G6. This is their brand new smartphone, and I have to admit it hasn't been long, but I am kind of in love. <laughs> The LG G6 has an 18 by 9 screen ratio, which makes it a fairly long phone for 5.7 inches. But one of the great things about it is that they've really focused on making this easy to kind of use with one hand or grip with one hand. So if you kind of look, I can pretty much get my fingers around it for a 5.7 inch device or for any smartphone these days. That's actually kind of a rarity. So it has a res resolution of 2880 by 1400. And it's actually a two to one ratio. So you can see that when I go to something like Let's check the management. No, no, let's go to essentials. And if we swap in the calendar, there we go, right? It's just a normal calendar. And then here you can see that we have a perfect two to one ratio. We're seeing that in a lot of different places through the UI. So we've got over here in weather, you can see that they've redesigned it so that there's a lot more photo. If we head into contacts, there I am, look at me. Right, so there's a lot more photo there as well. Uh, there's also stuff like the music player. If we take a tap into there, LG's got their life is good. So I guess if there's nothing, it kind of reverts to a two to one uh, screen ratio. But let's just play their little jingle. I can't hear anything. Let's see. Ooh. And it's, the, the back is actually kind of vibrating. Uh, so there is a single speaker down here on the bottom. That's a USB type C. It's got quick charge 3.0, um, 3,300 milliampere battery, which is a step up from what they've done uh, with the V20 and the G5. Now, the design aesthetic of this is very lovely. So I have the ice platinum version and you can see how well it just catches the light there. It almost looks a little bit metallic. Now I'm not that fond of Gorilla Glass 3, or sorry, 5, um, because well, any glass back is a black that I can break. So now this is actually flush, uh, unlike on the G5 where it had a camera bump. So these dual cameras are actually 13 megapixel. Uh, there was one standard, one wide. Uh, the reason why they've gone with 13 over something like the 16 which we had on the G5 is that they, they were able to get rid of the camera bump because of it. Now this is definitely a d departure in design language from what we had on the G5 because that was an all metal frame, it had the modular design, and LG has always been known for its removable batteries. But They've kind of still got the button on the back, and well, we have to give it to them that this display is very design-focused and centric. They've kind of really tailored on the fact that they have just done something different and unique with the curved edges here on the bottom. So you can see that it kind of curves around there. And now one of the interesting things about the display is that they've cut the corners. So they physically cut the display on the inside so that it curves around. Now. Last season in the smartphone world, uh, there was just, you know, a lot of issue with durability and reliability uh, with, you know, Samsung's batteries exploding or the fact that Samsung's displays curve around having that exposed edge that makes a display very easy to crack. So LG has taken the time to really kind of test out the durability with this. So with the cut corner, when this falls on the floor or falls on an edge, the impact is not, you know, directly on that sharp corner, it's kind of spread out all around. Now they've also, you know, this is a 7.9 millimeters thick, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's actually quite a, th a thin foam, but it just feels a lot thicker, just mostly because it's all edge, right? Like with so many smartphones now, especially with Samsung, the edge is kind of tailored down and then the display was out there. So it feels a lot, a lot thicker, but the fact is, is that they have this kind of rugged exterior because, they're, because they really don't want uh, the glass in the front and back to break. Now there is a little bit of a lip um, that's supposed to protect it. I barely see it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but what they have done is if you look at this antenna line, it's set further back from the corner. So when the, the, the phone does drop, and we all know the phone is gonna drop, it's gonna hit there, and then we're not gonna have any kind of micro fractures uh, within the antenna line. LG is in a lot of testing. I think it's something like you drop it like 20 times on the corner before they found that they had a micro fracture within the antennas. So the durability is definitely something that they've done a lot with. Now, I'm kind of focused up here on the top there. So we do have a five megapixel camera over here around the front. It has a 100 degree wide angle. 
I can pop into there. Let's uh, spin that around. Boom, there I am. 100 degree field of view, there it is. Um, but let's just focus mostly on the back camera for right now. So this is, again, we have a standard lens and then a wide angle lens. It's 71 degrees and then I think 121. So if we take a look at the narrow and the wide angle, so the wide angle is more like a GoPro where you can tap, but then it's mostly for light metering. If we head into the standard mode, you can see if I tap here, there's a bokeh effect that happens, right? So if I tap on the knee, then that goes into focus. If I tap on the flower, then it kind of bouquets. So that's kind of what we're seeing with this. There's no autofocus on the wide angle lens, even though the two sensors are identical. Thank you very much, Daniel, for your, your modeling there. <laughs> now, the, the camera roll is where we're seeing some of the interesting use of the, the extra pixels with the 18 by nine ratio. So over here is actually the camera roll. So you can see that we can preview live a lot of stuff. And then there's a square. So this is actually an app. If we go into, we can choose a square mode, right? So this will let you take a photo and then preview it directly. Or within square mode, you can see that there's these other options. Match shot will let you take two photos and then match them up. I actually tried really hard to take a photo of myself looking at myself. Um, I think that you need to be quite a creative person in order to really take advantage of match shot. A guide shot's an interesting one because you kind of line up uh, the food photo or the ice cream photo. But to be honest with you, this, this mode is actually really, really difficult to use. We kept on taking a photo and then it was using that photo as the guide shot, but then we didn't know how to get it back. And really, I just think we need to do a lot of work on guide shot to make it uh, come together a lot more seamlessly. A grid shot uh, is four photos in one. You can see there's a really great photo of me. There's four of me. Who doesn't love that? Um, to be honest with you, I think that LG is gonna need to do a little bit more explaining. They have some explaining to do uh, about this square mode. We will be seeing a lot of improvements happen um, over time to kind of take advantage of this perfect square ratio. So they're gonna be kind of carrying on with the concept of um, the, the, the square UI. Now, speaking of the UI, uh, they've done some interesting things that I am not that fond of. Now, you notice that uh, we have a square around Chrome. So usually that would be on a transparent background. But what's happening here is LG has decided to kind of take that Apple-esque approach in order uh, to make their UI seem more square. <laughs> uh, so the Play Store has another square around it. Uh, it adds a 70% transparency and kind of like the rounded corners uh, to the UI. I'm not a huge fan of what's going on there. So with this extra screen ratio as well, it's important to note if we head into the settings and head to display uh, that they do have an app scaling feature. So a lot of uh, Android 7.0 features actually will uh, automatically scale. So most games that you play will automatically scale and you don't, like you as a user won't have to do anything because it's kind of built into NuGet. But there will be some app developers who don't actually do that, right? So there's no app scaling, automatic app scaling on these ones because I mean they're benchmarks. And so they, like as a benchmark, you wouldn't want to do app scaling because you want the, the, the phone to kind of like run perfectly and not do any extra work just to scale your app. Um, so there's that. But at the same time, you as a user can decide what you want it to look like. So here we have this display where you can have it be 17 by nine or you can make it full screen or you could like stretch it. So it's interesting that they do offer this um, to you. Now, what else do they have? You can do the display size. Um, yeah, just lots of little things. Now, uh, in terms of brightness, they do have a daytime mode. Uh, let's see, I think it's outdoor. Uh, but it goes up to 600 nits and 500 nits standard. You can have the always-on display, like, like LG has had a lot, a lot in the past. So you have a digital clock, uh, you can have it time out, you can make it brighter or not. Let's not do that. Uh, speaking of the, the battery, we have a 3,300 milliampere battery in here. LG is claiming that it is going to last quite a long time, uh, considering that this is the third platform that they've launched the Snapdragon 821 processor on. I'm pretty sure that they've done a really good job of figuring out how to use it. So when we look at the internal specifications of this smartphone, we're going to see that we have some options globally. So if you're in the US, uh, this will have wireless charging and come with 32 gigabytes. If you are in Europe, you will get no wireless charging and 32 gigabytes. If you're lucky enough to be in Asia, you will get 64 gigabytes and you'll get DAC, you'll get DAC audio. 
So this, this actually happened with the G5 again, where um, Asia got, uh, I think it was b and audio. So it's, it's definitely a licensing issue. And Europe just gets kind of the shit end of the stick with the lowest gigabytes. And um, yeah, but I mean, you do have the option here to put a, a, um, a micro SD card up to 32 gigs. So like, oh, sorry, not up to 32, up to two terabytes. I mean, who's actually going to do that? So you do have that option. Now, what else can I show you about this phone? Uh, it is very, very nougat. And LG has said that they, you know, just decided on their own that this is exactly uh, what, it, what, what a UI should look like. Um, because this is just the best way that it happens. Now, one thing that I should point out before I go, um, if you take a look at this corner, right, you can see there that it's not quite perfect. Now, once I point it out to you, uh, you're gonna notice it all the time. So you can see that there's like, it's the radius is not quite, quite perfect. Now, if you're an OCD kind of person, uh, you will be irritated by it. But me overall, like when I just look at the handset, like, just straight up gorgeous. So that was my really detailed first walkthrough of the LG G6. Now, I have to I have to tell you that at first when I started using this phone, I was kind of feeling like oh, this is a little bit boring. LG could have done so much better. They all they did was put, you know, corners on it. They didn't put the latest processor, but all of that is actually kind of like it's actually bullshit that I didn't I didn't really get the phone when I first started kind of playing around with it. The industry overall has kind of trended towards a really kind of shitty spiral of the latest processors and like a lack of focus on durability and really lost sight of what's important to the smartphone user. For me, the camera is really important, the battery life is really important, the durability is freaking key. Because if I ha can't, I have a phone that breaks, of course it's going to be a terrible experience. That's actually why I don't use Samsung devices. I don't know, I crack an average of like four displays a year because this is my job and unfortunately I haven't gotten less clumsy <laughs> over time. The Honor 8, I managed to crack that by the end of the unboxing, which is actually kind of a shocker. But LG has really taken the time to make supposedly a tank. I mean, this is a phone that can be dropped several times and they've really taken into consideration, you know, with cutting the corners that you can really kind of build it in a way that it's going to last you the maybe two years that you're going to keep your phone. And they have really built an elegant kind of face. And let's be honest, on the back, you're probably going to put a case on anyways, like most people, because you want your device to not break and last. So having said that, it shouldn't actually matter if you don't get the ice platinum and you go for one of the boring, more kind of like white or black colors. And there actually will be more colors coming out uh, later that will fill in for the female market. So I'm just gonna say that I really hope I get a red phone <laughs> or purple, a deep purple, that would be kind of amazing. So very long winded, first impressions, kind of in love. The initial camera testing is actually looking better than the Pixel. We'll get into that later um, in a separate video when I have time to actually do a proper review. But first impressions, absolutely love it. So leave me a comment if you want any specific details in the review because I'm always here to answer your questions. Nicole Scott here for Mobile Geeks. Yeah.